Good morning. I've taken a break from uh, making these videos for about a week and you won't know it because they'll be posted in kind of order anyway, but or not on order, but randomly as we post them. But so I'm kind of getting back in. Um, I'm going to try to make five videos this week, like last like week before last. Last week I took a week off. Um, today's video is called What Jesus Didn't Say, What Jesus Did Say, What Jesus Didn't Say. And um, I'm kind of going to make it quick and to the point. But um, I'm sure this one will have some potential for controversy if somebody's really thinking what Jesus did say, what Jesus didn't say. There are two passages of Scripture we're going to look at here. One place where Jesus said something, and then he stops, and what isn't said is implied. And another place where Jesus says something, and he stops, and he didn't say the next part, but what he didn't say is important. And some people could argue, I'm sure, exactly the opposite of the point I'm going to make today. Um, let's talk about it and think about it. Um, there'll be this will kind of be up for some discussion. In Matthew, in Mark chapter fifteen, Mark chapter fifteen, verse thirty-four, when Jesus is hanging on the cross at the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice. So imagine Jesus is hanging on the cross, and with a loud voice, he call, calls out, "Ela, Ela, lama sabachthani," which is translated, "My God, My God." Why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? I was taught growing up that at this moment on the cross, Jesus was totally abandoned. He was totally distanced from, distant from the Father. The Father had turned his back on the Son. The Father had, had said to the Son, because of your sin, I can no longer look on you. And that was the theology that I was taught that Jesus took on to himself all of our sin, and on the cross the Father said, I can no longer look at you. I can no longer have anything to do with you. Later, I came to believe that that made no logical sense. Zero, absolutely zero logical sense. It didn't make any sense to me because if Jesus was 100% fully and completely God and 100% fully and completely man, there's no way that God could turn him back on himself. It just didn't make any sense. It made no logical sense. But somehow what Jesus was saying here on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It has to mean something. So what could it mean? One of the things that I never knew is that Jesus... I never knew until years later. I mean, I grew up being taught that God had turned his back on the, the Father had turned his back on the Son. But nobody in all of those years of my childhood ever told me that Jesus on, in Mark 15, 34 was actually quoting Psalms chapter 22. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me and from the words of my roaring oh my god i cry in the daytime but thou hearest not and in the night season and i'm not and am not silent but thou art holy o lord thou inhabitest inhabitest the praises of israel our fathers trusted in thee they trusted and thou didst deliver them they cried unto thee and were delivered they trusted in thee and were not confounded here's what I believe Jesus was saying on the cross when he said, My God, my God, why hast thou have you why have you forsaken me? Why hast thou forsaken me is the way I learned it in King James, and it almost came right out there. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Was Jesus' way of saying to the people there, Hey, you know, even though it feels like God has forsaken us, there's more to Psalms 22. And you say, well, Josh, we went all these years and never realized that Jesus was quoting Psalms 22 when he said this. How do you, why do you think they knew? Because they knew. There's no doubt the people there, no doubt the people listening there, immediately, they immediately knew the rest of this passage. It was all there for them. They heard it all. They thought it all. They knew it all. And so what happened was Jesus was saying, my God, my God, it feels like you've forsaken me, but I know that you will deliver. You do deliver. I can trust in you. 
And so Jesus was saying to the people there, not just the beginning of Psalm 22, but Jesus was quoting the beginning of Psalm 22 for them to play out the entire song in their mind so that they could know, they could be reminded that Jesus had not lost hope. Now, it's interesting because I'm going to show you another passage and almost make the exact uh, opposite point. Here we are in Luke chapter 4, 16 through 21, and, he, and it says, And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as was his custom, he entered the synagogue on the Sabbath and stood up to read. And the book of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him, and he opened the book and found the, pl the place where it was written. And he read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim the release of captives and, recover the, of, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. And he closes the book. Jesus closes the book. That means that Jesus read, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, anointed to preach to the poor, proclaim cap, the release of captives, recovery of sight to the blind, set free the oppressed, proclaim the favorable year of the Lord, and he stops. He closes the book and gives it back to the attendant and sits down. And all the eyes of the synagogue were fixed upon him. And he began to say to them, Today, Scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, this time, I believe that Jesus intentionally shut the book and didn't read the part that the audience there wanted to hear most. You say, what was it? Well, the part that he didn't read is and the day of vision, vengeance of our God. See, so Jesus read the setting free of the afflicted. He read the good news. He read the sent the, to bind up the brokenhearted. He read to proclaim liberty to the captives and freedom to the prisoners. And he read to the favorable year of the Lord, but then he shuts the book and he says, this vengeance part, I'll have nothing to do with. You might say, Josh, well, why don't you think that he just shut the book and he knew that they knew the next part? Well, I don't think that's the way it is. You say, Josh, how can you make that decision? I can't. How can you say that with confidence? I can only say that with confidence because I know the character of God. Because I've watched, you know, I've, I've, I've learned about Jesus. I've I've walked with him. I've talked to him. I, I, I have that that mystical spiritual connection where 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 we talk and you say well josh you can't say that that on the cross he was implying the rest of psalms 22 but in this passage he was intentionally not not quoting the vengeance part i know i know but i am that's what i'm saying what do you think let's talk about it in the comments